I have wanted to do this video for a while now. Um, the problem was I was missing two things. I was missing a rat and a twisted sister. Uh, two records that were part of my initial shipment from the Columbia Record Club. Now, for anybody not familiar with record clubs, they basically promised you a whole ton of records up front. They would just ship them to you. And then you're supposed to buy a few, sometimes more than a few, in Columbia's case, like six, at regular club prices. Um, but when you're 12 or 13 years old, you don't, you don't really pay attention to that regular club prices bit. You just see 12 records for a penny. And some of these little ads actually had you pay, like tape a like, you know, red penny to the actual uh, order form and send it in. And that was like every day, you know, waiting waiting coming home from the post coming home from school waiting 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 for that shipment to come and yeah I, I remember finding um i remember seeing ads for it it was before i subscribed to like rolling stone or anything like that it was like ads in the back of parade magazine which is that magazine that that almost like the new york times sunday magazine it comes in like sunday newspapers usually has a feature story and in the back there's like a list of all just tons of records that i'm interested in and i can get 12 of them for a penny so I signed up and um, they arrived one day and it's like this huge box full of like 12 vinyl records. I was like thrilled, you know, it was like Christmas. It was unbelievable. They sent them all to me. All I had to do is just fill out a form and then they, they come in the mail. And I think my dad wasn't too pleased. He, I think he felt like he was gonna be on the hook for it or that, you know, minors aren't supposed to be ordering um, records like that or making that kind of commitment. But um, anyway, uh, it was it was great. And I'll show you some of these records because I still have them. Um, I don't I always remember, like, I, I'm just going to pull out the cars, um, Heartbreak City. But I just see as I'm looking at it, it says RCA Music Service. So we'll stick with Columbia at first, the ones I'm pretty sure came with my initial shipment. The two that I'm missing, Twisted Sister, Stay Hungry, that's the one where they... D. Schneider's got the bone, the raw bone on the cover. I mean, you, everybody should know that. Uh, if they don't, please look it up when you're done watching this. Um, and then Rat out of the cellar, which had round and round on it. Stay, um, Stay Hungry had I Want to Rock, and um, we're not going to take it. You know, when you're 12 years old, those are like anthems. I mean, I thought they were ridiculous looking at the time. And I used to draw, you know, Van Halen logos and Twisted Sister logos in Sunday school and you know, but uh, yeah, that, I thought they were kind of. I thought Twisted Sister was kind of ridiculous at the time. Rat, I loved. I love that song, Round and Round. The rest of the album, it was okay. Um, Twisted Sister, I remember it said to all the SMS out there, and I just thought that was something sinister. What is a SMF? A sick motherfucker. I did not know that. Um, found that out years later. I think that might have still kind of bothered me at that age. I don't know. Like, oof, cussing, bad words. Um, one of the records I know I for sure got, I'm going to double check. Yeah, it says CRC on it. Huey Lewis in the News. If, when you, in 1985, um, you could not avoid this album. Had a Heart of Rock and Roll, Heart and Soul, I Want a New Drug, Walking on a Thin Line, If This Is It. It was like Born in the USA. It was everywhere. It had just about as many singles, and this album was absolutely huge. And it was kind of fun, you know? I, I mean... I listened to like one song of it a while ago and I was floored by how good it sounded um, as far as like uh, pressing and all that. It just sounded really, really good. But yeah, I, I keep it. It doesn't hit the turntable very often at all. Um, okay, the big one. The big one that I ordered. Um, Shout at the Devil, Motley Crue. Okay, this was like, I, I was so intrigued by this band. They scared the hell out of me in a way. I didn't have MTV, so I didn't see those early videos at the time. Um, I think my dad was trying to like keep MTV from me, uh, hoping that it would maybe cut off a lifelong uh, devotion and interest in music. That didn't go so well. Um, but anyway, this album, Shout the Devil, was so so uh, like mysterious and interesting and scary, and you know, had the pentagram on the cover. You open it up. Scary, scary when you're a kid. What is this? Uh, they didn't, you know, other other hair metal bands. They they looked, I don't know, like 
kind of normal dudes just kind of dressed up. Molly Crew are scary. And I love the record. I mean, from the beginning, too. In the beginning, that song, song like, uh, I know it was a Beatles cover, but I had not heard the Beatles cover. Helter Skelter was kind of scary. Song called Bastard. Knock em Dead Kid. God Bless the Children of the Beast. I had a friend who was like kind of a born again nut, and he was uh, going on and on about how bad God Bless the Children of the Beast are. It's an instrumental song, and all it says at the very end are, are those, that line. But super interested in it. I read some interview with Nikki Six a while ago talking about people that are my age group that it legitimately scared the shit out of, and I'm one of them. So much so, like I was saying, I didn't have MTV. I saw some 2020 Barbara Walters and Hugh Downs expose on backward masking in music, and they played Motley Crue, or, they, or maybe Satanic Messaging in music, and they played a little bit of this record, and they showed some of those videos that I hadn't seen. And one of them was like tossing out uh, um, the, um, what is the word, the pentagrams. You know, they're like shooting out like at you, like animated. And I, I found it really scary. And I think they might have talked about some unrelated, um, what was a case with the guy in the Judas Priest record that ended up killing himself, something like that. And, and I just, this scared the shit out of me. So much so after seeing that, that I tore it in half, I broke the record, I threw it in the trash. I did not, it's, it scared me, I didn't want it in my bedroom. I bought another copy of it, this one, years later. Um, but it's not my original Columbia Record Club one. That that went to the uh, garbage bin. There was no recycling back then either. Another one that I that was part of that shipment, Brian Adams' Reckless. I'm looking again. Oh, wrong. It's RCA. Okay, it came around the same time. RCA records were um, a slightly better deal, really. I think it was you got six or so, maybe eight records, but you landed by one. So that was seemed like a much better deal, but of course I did both of them. Um, another record that I got, huge at the time, Billy Joel, An Innocent Man. I mean, kind of another record with just a ton of singles on it. Innocent Man, Tell Her About It, Uptown Girl, Keeping the Faith. I, I never listen to this stuff. I, I don't, I'm not a big Billy Joel fan to begin with, but um, got that. This was pretty huge too. I mean, this is like 1985. This 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 stuff was everywhere, um, and I was shocked. Wait, this band has seven, 16 albums before it. What? Um, Hard habit to break. You're the meaning in my life. You're the inspiration, which I used to think for the longest time was the lyric. I want to have you with me. I want to have. I want to have you here with Satan. Somebody told me later was, I want to hear you say it. Makes a lot more sense. The other one I got, Sammy Agar, VOA. Uh, I didn't, I thought it was okay. Um, and then, of course, he goes and joins my favorite band at the time, which that's a whole other story. And I got Kiss, Lick It Up. I remember uh, kids coming to school with Kiss lunch um, boxes and T-shirts. It looked like... Um, cartoon characters comic book characters to me i was never into comic books so i and i wasn't really into music yet you know at seven or eight years old i mean a little bit but not not so much that I would that I would know kiss i'm the oldest i don't have any older siblings so my introduction to them really was when they took off the makeup and they put out stuff like this um now my god they got this on um on uh the columbia record club then i got this one which was the one that was popular at the time Animalize from uh, Columbia. So, um, or no, RCA rather. I got this one from RCA. <clears throat> Not that it matters too much, but it is weird. Like I was talking about with Motley Crue, how they scared me. Kiss had some really screwed up stuff around, of course, around sex. And I just remember as a kid being like, fits like a glove? What? And then Animalize, burn, bitch, burn. He's going to stick his log in her fireplace, burn, bitch, burn. It's like, I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know what to make of that. I still don't. Um, and then I got like, I don't know, Bill Cosby. I think I had Bill Cosby himself in that initial one. I was into him for a little while. That was way before anybody knew who Bill Cosby really was. And of course, there's records that I that I um, had that were part of that shipment. 
that I just don't have anymore. One of them was Madonna's Like a Virgin, which I wish I still had. Um, I think one of my sisters probably took it. And the other one was um, Signs of Life, I think, by Billy Square, which I don't really care about. I, I didn't like it then, and I, I don't think I really particularly would enjoy it now. I think Rock Me Tonight was, was a single off that. Anyway, um, I do wish, yeah, like I said, I wish I had um, Like a Virgin. So I get all these records, they had all come to me, and if you're not familiar, I have the magazines here, some of them. I found these recently when I was going through my stuff because I'm going to have a move coming up pretty soon here. And I was trying to get organized back around December, January when I had a little time off. Um, the deal with these clubs is if you, you get a, a magazine like this, comes every with every shipment, or not every shipment, every month you get a little package. You get this and you get an order form. If you do not return the order form, they do something really nice for you. They send the selection of the month automatically for you and you get charged at regular club prices. Well, all right, looking at the Stones one, first of all, it's never stuff that's current, right? Like I looked this up, this is uh, August 86. Uh, Dirty Work came out at the end of March 86. So anybody, including me, who, who it was my introduction to the Stones really, I'd heard Hot Rocks and then it's like, oh, they have a new record out, interesting. Yeah, I had already bought it. You know, I crossed it off. There's a little, uh, you can see my little check mark. You know, oops, I'm bad with the mirror image here. Um, so I already had this. But so yeah, you're gonna wait. So it comes out in April or March, rather, August '86. It's old news. But you know, if you don't, if you want the selection of the month, you don't have to do anything. It just comes to you along with a uh, a hefty um, invoice. Um, now, nine ninety eight, I believe, is what they what the price on this was, which sounds pretty reasonable now. But the problem is, um, an album like Dirty Work in nineteen eighty six would usually that may have been the list price, but usually you could get it at like your local record store, even like a Music Land or a Sam Goody for like six ninety nine, maybe seven ninety nine. Sometimes even five ninety nine. So you weren't paying uh, ten bucks on average for. A record. In addition to these record club prices, um, which were like usually nine ninety eight or more, sometimes eight ninety eight. Sometimes you get sales, but all that, all these sales, like the one that I had in here was, one of them was, um, yeah, get one take, one tape a record for half price with with every one you buy at regular club prices. And I don't have the order form in here, but those regular club prices, like I said, were eight ninety eight or nine ninety eight, somewhere around there. Sometimes ten ninety eight, but the shipping and handling was like ridiculous. I was, I remember it being like four buck, four or five bucks. So it was like you were paying as much almost in shipping as you were for the records. So if you're paying fourteen dollars to get ZZ Top Afterburner, I, you know, I bought it at the mall. For like six ninety nine, I found it interesting looking through these CDs were out at this time barely, but you can order CDs for some titles. And I went through on this one, I crossed off everything I have, which is kind of interesting too. But um, my dad told me something once I was getting all these um, shipments that I had not bothered to put a stamp on the "I do not want it." Please don't send me the selection of the month automatically within fourteen days because I didn't get that. I sometimes got stuff sent to me the selection of the month and it would be it always be an album i just could care less of less of for you know like journey selection of the month or john cougar mellencamp or the soundtrack to miami vice or top gun which actually i think i might have kept that might have been the one or you get both of them i don't know i, I do have top gun and i know it came from record club zz top that kind of stuff but my dad told me that you can always write return to sender on something if you don't open it and just drop it in the post post uh, box or post uh, you know one of those orange um orange blue boxes and it would just get sent back so i did that i did that i got lazy i didn't i didn't do too many um return too many cards on time i just write return to sender and drop it in the mail well they got really upset with me they did not like that one bit and they were um i was getting threatening letters and stuff and and then eventually they just stopped I just got, and I had signed up other people too. That was a thing too. Uh, maybe that was a little bit more RCA, but you could, um, 
I would use very, I would send up my friends, you know, they would get their eight records or whatever for, for one. And I would get four for signing them up once. Sometimes they got a little clever later on. They had to, the friend had to buy their first, um, rec, their record first, but usually you got them right away. Um, but I did variations on my own name as well. Uh, same address, sign, my, sign myself up essentially. And it worked um, for a long time. But, uh, but yeah, Columbia finally cut me off, which meant I never had to buy those six records. And unlike something like like would have happened today, you know, you didn't need to write down a credit card number. They weren't going to automatically bill you. They had no way of doing it. You were a kid. And just talking about this um, with other people, it seems like most people never really fulfill their obligation or maybe we're just the bad ones. I don't know. But it was really interesting time and it was a great way to, to start your record collection. Um, of course, I think kids today have it so much easier because you can get whatever you want in your pocket for free. Um, so yeah, I mean, by compare, there is no comparison. I mean, yeah, for physical media, it was cool and it would be kind of nice to have something like that now, but a lot of times the pressings weren't as good. Um, cassettes, especially. I, I remember looking at the cassettes and being like, I don't want that. I'm not gonna even, I don't even want to have to buy one for them because a lot of times like the spine was this generic white spine where everything else, if you, your friends had it or you saw it in the store, it was a normal packaging and it just was so cheap looking. I didn't really see that with, with vinyl. I mean, maybe if you, maybe if, you know, I was to research things on Discogs, you know, some, some things might not have come with inserts or maybe the lyrics weren't in there. It often depended on whether it was one of their records or ones that they licensed. And then another thing I found out recently too is that um, the reason why a lot of these record clubs lasted for so long is they paid their, their royalties, their, their artists, almost nothing. It was like deemed promotional item club and the royalties on there were almost non-existent. So anyway, can't say that I miss them. I'm glad they don't aren't still looking for me. Although, you know, maybe I should, you know, keep this, this, this video on the lowdown a little bit and not broadcast it too much, but it's, Everybody knows. Everybody knows their story. But um, but yeah, that's my story with the Columbia Record Club and RCA. I think you know I start. I signed up for these when I was twelve or thirteen. I think by the time I was like fourteen or fifteen, fifteen probably, I was done with them. And then they came back, or at least in my mind, came back. RCA did with uh, BMG, and that was pretty good too with CDs. It was like eight, six or eight for for one and. By that time, I had no problem just buying the one and signing people up. But, I, you know, I would become much more interested in packaging and wanting the real thing. And when I, when I could tell that they were delivering like a subpar product when it wasn't the same as the regular store brought one, I would just lost interest. So, um, but yeah, it was an interesting time. I would love to hear your stories of the record clubs that you belong to and whether you still have those pressings. And I know some of them are good, but I was just gogging my, my collection. Um, some of the record club ones people are, were going on about being a really good pressing so anyway uh that's it i think i'm gonna go look for my rat and twisted sister now and maybe i'll have a special video on, on those two once i find them when i move